Um, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, um, that uh, the Holy Spirit is going to be outpoured on us in Joel, that there is a prophecy that was given, that there was destruction in the land, and that if the people would turn to God, if they would repent, they would seek Him, that He would He would restore everything, that everything would look beautiful again. And everything that the locusts had eaten, instead of over and over, everything the locusts had been eaten, uh, it would be restored, and the Holy Spirit would be poured out on everybody. And uh, as, together as a church, we said yes, you know, yes, we want that, right? And then last week, uh, again, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and what it would look like if the Holy, if we were to be full of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter five. It, it says that man, we would uh, we would not be drunk on wine, but we'd be drunk in the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit would affect our whole being. We would. Yeah. We would be filled with joyous song. We would be uh, full of thanksgiving, and, and we would be serving one another, submitting to one another. And, and and this week, I was praying, and I was thinking. I was praying all week long, and I thought, okay, this is going to be a week that's just going to be like, um, just continue in that wave, right? Like like every time I open the word this week, it's just going to be like Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I met with uh, Kurt at coffee on Friday, and I said, you know, I've been reading the word every day, and it's just like. I'm like, wait, what, God, what do you want to, what, what do you want to say, what do you want to say, what do you want to say, it's like, uh, Friday afternoon, it's Saturday afternoon, it's Sunday morning, and I'm like, okay, what do you want to say, uh, what do you want to say, um, and I'm still actually about to speak, and I'm like, okay, I have some scriptures, I have some things, and I'm still saying, Holy Spirit, what do you, what do you want to say this morning? Amen. Come on. Sorry. Come on. Come on. I, I, like I don't think it's for lack of like being in the word. I was like, okay, God, I followed the steps. You know, you're supposed, you know, like uh, <laughs> the one thing in in Matthew chapter ten is that we're going to look at. But Matthew chapter ten, uh, Jesus sends out his disciples, and along the way, and it's like maybe this is why the Holy Spirit's doing there. God's doing this to me today. So uh, that along the way, they, that he he tells them that they're going to heal the sick. So we can look at that real quick, just briefly. Um, Matthew chapter 10. So Jesus is sending out his disciples in verse 4, and he, and he says, Go everywhere except for in the Gentiles, and, and heal the sick, say the kingdom of heaven is coming, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Uh, you have received without paying, give without paying. And so you see this, this beautiful thing. And, and then Jesus talks about there's going to be trouble that's going to come. And even as they're going, that he's sending them like sheep amongst wolves. He's sending them uh, innocent among uh, people that are ready to destroy them. And he talks about there's going to be, there's going to be things that are going to happen. And, and some people aren't going to accept you. And if they don't accept you, then keep on moving on. And, and, and then it gets down here. And this is, this is where we're going to end up today. At some point on this verse in chapter 10, verse 17 through 20, I want to read that ahead of time. It says, Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before the governors and kings for my sake. So bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Amen. Yeah. So I came in this morning and I, and I turned to, to Dad, the pastor, and I said, uh, I, I don't know exactly what I want to speak today, but all I know is this verse keeps on uh, ringing in my head all week long. This is the only thing that was uh, there. So this morning I just want to pray, and then we're going to go into what I believe God has for us this morning. God, I thank you that you're here with us. I, I thank you for your word. I, God, I thank you for your spirit that enables us and empowers us Lord. to do your will and to do your work. And so this morning, God, I, I pray just as I pray every Sunday, God, I pray that your words would be spoken. Uh, Father, it wouldn't be in my own power or, or my own ways or my own knowledge, but God, it would be by your power. The words are spoken and hearts are, are touched. And Lord, yes. your people, Lord, your children, receive what you have to say to them. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I was thinking about this passage here in Matthew chapter 10. Uh, God led me also to Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. It's a great commission. And as we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, part of the thing is, you know, why, 
why is the Holy Spirit, the fact of the Holy Spirit, the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit necessary? Why was it something that the disciples uh, sought after? And again, today we, we begin to sing a song, I'm Desperate for You. Well, there, in Matthew chapter 28, it, it has this, this last words, this last command to the, to the disciples. And he says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nation, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus' last words here are then, um, if, you, if you look at the backdrop in, in Matthew chapter 10, and other places where Jesus is speaking about going, and he gives this command, go and make disciples, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was this backdrop that things aren't going to go well for you. <laughs> and so I, I, I love, and you guys know that you've been a part of the church uh, for maybe a little while, uh, that, man, we, we love to emphasize going and making disciples. And, and Rachel and I moved into apartment complex, you know that, so that we can reach our neighbors. And like the, we, we, we picked that spot and we said, all right, God, you're, you're going to help us to, to share with others around me. Um, and and it, when God gives this command to the disciples, he gives it with this backdrop, it's not going to be easy. And this is why, when I sing this morning, man, God, I'm, I'm desperate for you. Uh, one is, yeah, God, I'm desperate for you alone, that, man, that you receive all the worship, and that, I, that you, are, you are worthy of my prayer, you are worthy of, of living for, God. Uh, there's nothing in this world that can satisfy me like you, right? I'm desperate for you. Uh, and so that, that, on one side, is my personal reason. But secondly, God, in, in light of this instruction, God, I'm desperate for you. Uh, right? Uh, God, I, I am in need of your Holy Spirit. I, I, am, I am desperately in need of your empowerment, of your word, uh, of your infilling. Because, God, on my own, I can't attract anybody to you. Like, I, I can't do this job on my own, right? I, I can't fulfill these commands. I, I can't lead anybody to you because in, my, in and of myself, man, I, I don't look that good. Right? Like, let's be honest, right? I need Jesus. We need Amen. His Holy Spirit Amen. desperately. Paul is this beautiful example of somebody that was going to all the nations, going to make disciples, going and planting churches. And in Romans chapter 15, verse 20 and 21, it says this, that Paul said, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel. Sorry, sorry. I make it my ambition to preach the gospel not where Christ has already been named, least I build on somebody else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. Paul made it his mission, I'm going to go and preach to those who have never heard, those who, have, those who are hardened against me. And I'm thinking for us as a church, when we look at our neighbors, and I'm like, okay, we've been talking about this and talking a little bit about intimidation. In our missional community, the one nights were like, it's kind of intimidating to think about going and sharing my faith in the workplace and, and what that would look like. And, and we've been encouraging each other, hey, let's let's set up some dinners, let's let's set up some some things in, in our life, some ping pong time, right? Where where we can go in and in a common place, man, we can demonstrate what it means to be desperately in love with the God of the universe, right? And, and Paul said, man, I, I'm making it my ambition. I am ready to preach. The gospel. Paul says also to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy 4 5. He's, he's setting up a, a church and he says to the Timothy who, who has been with them and he's been training on how to, to live life and, and how to preach the gospel and how to share it with others. He says this encouragement to him in 2 Timothy 4 5. He says, Do the work of an evangelist. Preach the gospel. This is the ongoing call of the Lord. That's right. You know, there's unreached people groups. Just recently, we had uh, a story over the news, right, of a young man who said, man, it is my, my goal in life that I would reach the unreached with the gospel. And he, he broke some laws. 
he, he planned it out, and he sailed uh, to an island off of India to go and share the gospel. And, and there's been this huge debate, uh, 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 there was a huge debate that went on, right, of, of was he, was he, did he do that the right thing? Did he, you know, breaking the laws and going to reach his people, they, they're um, a, a, group of, uh, a group of people that have, are untouched by a modern society, right? The, the government protects them and, and allows them to live that way and just keeps everybody away, so they kind of reserves them. But he said, I am so desperate to, to share the gospel. And he, his last journal entry is, is not, it's, it's sort of an apology to his family, but not really an apology to his family. He said, I know the risks that I'm about to take. God is worthy of my life. Yeah. And he lost his life sharing the gospel. Jesus' command is to go and to make disciples. The, the disciples, uh, after he gave this command, Jesus uh, about to enter into heaven, he tells them to wait for what? For an empowerment. Why? Because he knew that it was going to take something of him. It was going to take something of heaven to empower us to do the mission that he's called us to do. Keep on thinking again of this, this verse that I read already this morning. Don't worry about what you're going to say, but in that hour, it's going to be given to you. Kurt and I were like, we, we get together for coffee all the time, it's awesome. Every, every coffee shop in this little area, their cashiers are on notice. You know, the gospel is coming their way, right? We set up appointments and we, we go and we, we share the gospel. Uh, but what we've been talking about, we're like, let's like make an action plan. We've got to get together on Saturdays and let's start going and sharing the gospel. Let's start doing it. Who's with us? Yeah. There, hey. <laughs> Right? So, uh, I said, it's freezing cold outside. <laughs> and every Saturday morning, you know, in the summertime in, in Wisconsin, we know, right? It's summertime on Saturdays, everybody's out of the house. They're gone, right? But when it's freezing outside at about 10, 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning, everybody's in their house in Madison, right? It's like, it's cold. So what a perfect opportunity for us to start going door to door in this neighborhood and just sharing and saying, hey, what do, you, what do you need? Can we pray for you? Here's the gospel. Do you know, I love uh, the question, do you know that Je how much Jesus loves you? And, and you know what? We're putting it on the calendar. Next Saturday, 10 o'clock. I don't know if you're available. I'm available. I'm available. So, so let's do it. So 10 o'clock on next Saturday, we're meeting here at, at the church and we're going to go share but it's, it's putting into practices. Paul was like this. If we see these men of faith in the, in the scriptures, man, they were going after it. They didn't even care what they were going to face. Jesus is giving them instruction. Hey, you guys are about to get killed. Go anyway. And the disciples are like, all right, I'm going. I'm going. What, what allowed them to go? What empowerment allowed them to go? And they had the Holy Spirit with them. They were sent with the authority that God had, that Jesus had to go and to make disciples, to go and change the world. anything, I, a few months ago we preached on this, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Like, like, we don't know when. So I, I, there's a lot of books out there, there's a lot of different people have predicted over the years, you know, Jesus is going to come back at this year, and he's going to come back at this time, and, and look at these signs in the sky, and it's going to, and it's going to happen this time. And, and I'll just tell you, I, nobody knows. Jesus said that. We can bake on it. Nobody knows, it's up to the Father, when it's going to happen, but he's coming back. And I know, and you know in this room, if Jesus is coming back, there, there's, that, that judgment is going to take place. And I can't help but think about the fact that there's people around me that need Jesus. They need the good news. And so when I cry out this morning, God, I'm desperate for you. When I, when I look at the passage of Joel that talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and when, and when I think about this, I, I'm like, yes, God, I, I want this because I know that I need it. Because I have neighbors. And in myself, I mean, you guys may think maybe I'm a little bit extrovert. In myself, I, I really don't like talking to strangers. Like, it's not like my favorite thing to do. Anybody? It's not really my favorite. But empowered by the Holy Spirit with the with the message of the gospel and the idea that there's a coming judgment, I can't help but say, I'm willing, God. I'm willing, God. Give me the power I need. Give me your Holy Spirit because I'm willing to go. I'm willing to say because if I don't, if they don't receive, I know there's coming an eternal separation and, and I don't want anybody to be separated from you, God. I just can't do it. I just can't. God, give me what I need. 
God, I need your Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 10, it talks about the cost. So we're gonna, let's look at that a little bit, because, uh, because it will cost us something. But, but not only is there going to be a cost, it's also going to be a blessing. And those are outlined here as well. There's going to be a blessing for us as we go and speak, and, and there's going to be a cost for us as we go and speak. Let's look here in Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse uh, 16 through 18. And it says this, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. First of all, I'm like, God, Jesus, you need to learn some encouragement, encouragement, uplifting, you know, like, wholesome talk, right? Whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever uplifting thing on these things. I love, I love the words of Jesus, because they're just straightforward. They're like, it's going to be tough. I'm sending you a sheep among the wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in the synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for the sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. So number one, I, number one from scripture this morning, it is it may come at the cost of being arrested by authorities. Now we think in this New Testament, we're like, okay, yes, there, there is uh, physical authorities, there is governmental authorities that, that were against the message of the gospel. Right now, in, in our current, in Madison, Wisconsin, I'm saying around the world that this may still be true, where they can be dragged before authorities, right? We know that. But in Madison, Wisconsin, we're like, okay, maybe it's not, not government officials that are going to come and drag us uh, because we preach the gospel. It might get close to there, depending. I'm thinking, I mean, HR departments. I'm telling you. When the Holy Spirit, when we get this gospel and understand it, and we have the Holy Spirit in us, and, and even though we know that there's rules and regulations on what we can talk about and what we can't talk about, uh, when the Holy Spirit, when we understand the, the desperate need that the people around us have for the gospel, uh, we're, we're willing, it's going to, it might cost us some meetings with authority. Some meeting with our HR department, some meetings with some managers, some meeting, and, and in those moments, the promise is that the Holy Spirit is going to be able to be there and speak to us. That we're going to have a, yet another opportunity to speak the gospel. Let's see, let's see another, another cost here. Uh, in verse 21. In 21 it says, Brothers will deliver brother over to death, and the father, his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. That's a, that's a hard one. It may cost some family betrayal for you to go after God and you to share the gospel the way God has asked us to, with the authority He has for us. Are you ready for this? Jesus is saying, go, go. It's going to be awesome because people are going to know me, but it's going to cost you. And your family members may not understand what you're doing. I, I got the privilege of, of ministering on a college campus. I had a, a, a really good friend of mine, Nicole. She's at uh, a big conference right now with a whole bunch of Chi Alpha students in Chicago. There's actually a thousand students right now in Chicago, part of uh, Assembly of God Chi Alpha Ministries in this region. So Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, they're all meeting together right now. Uh, a thousand of them. Uh, when, when I first started at Indiana at Purdue University, about 400 of them uh, would meet every year at this conference. So there's a thousand. It's like awesome, God, cool things happening. But Nicole, she went to Mary and Williams uh, to get her, her master's degree in kinesiology. And then uh, she was going to Purdue University to get her doctors in kinesiology. So that, that is a nice fancy word to talk about how the brain um, tells the body how to move and things of that nature. So she was studying all that, doing PhD level work. So if you talk about the level of schooling she had and the amount of costs that her parents were um, paying for all of these different degrees. Mary Williams a pretty prestigious school in itself, Purdue University. Uh, she's, they, they had paid some bills for her, and she was in her last year of her PhD program, and she felt God speak to her and say, it's not worth it. Go into the mission field. And she said, yeah, 
<laughs> Gosh, <laughs> you're right. You're worthy of it. And talk about making some family members upset and, 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 and causing some confusion in the family. And Nicole, we've, we've, I mean, they were a line of doctors, you know, they, they, when we've done these things, we've, we've pushed you to this level, you, you've made it this far, like, keep on going. She gave her heart to the Lord and she said, yes, God, you, you at any cost gave your life up for me. Jesus, I'm willing to give up all these studies, all these years to go into the mission field. And now Nicole is leading, leading hundreds of people on a regular basis to Jesus, just by being faithful, right? It is going to cost us something. It may cost us some betrayal, some family members, some close friends. They don't understand why you're, why you're just getting all sold out for Jesus. But it's going to be worth it for the kingdom of God to expand. Uh, let's continue. There's a, there's a couple more costs here. So cost three, uh, verse 22. And you will be hated by all for your name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So I read the, I read the, the promise, the, the good part on that one. But, but there's a cost here that you'll be hated for your name's sake. Be careful that we don't elevate our friendship over evangelism to the point where the text makes evangelism possible. You'll be hated by all does not mean you cannot do the work of evangelists. I have this, this constant kind of struggle in my life as I've met my neighbors and, and you know, we do the cookies and the different things and, and meet the different people in our, our apartment complex. And, and, I, and I had, as I've been thinking about this whole passage this week, I was thinking, uh, how many times have I now like actually had that gospel conversation? We've, We've watched movies together, we've ate dinner together, we've done cookies, and, and they've, a couple of them have come to church with us. One of them is coming to our Bible study on, on Wednesday night, but, but have I like sat down and said, this is the gospel, this is the good news. It may cost some people to hate us. Another cost is verse 23. Um, when they persecute you in one, one town, flee to the next, for surely I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns instead before the Son of Man comes. The cost of being persecuted, of being driven out of town, of being the weirdo on the block, of being the, the weird person, the, the, it, it might cost us persecution. I know around the world we can get into those kind of persecutions. And I'm willing, whatever the cost, whatever the persecution, I'm willing to go. And I, and I just hear these stories, and I say, I can't share, my, I can't share the gospel message with my, with my neighbor. There's a cost. There's a cost that we may be killed for our faith in uh, verse 28. Verse 28, and it says this, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill, kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are we so caught up in the life that we live and the way that we live it and the good that we have and the wonderful passions and desires we have? Are we so caught up with that that, that we're, we're too worried about losing those comforts that we have for the sake of the gospel? This doesn't talk about our, the very breath can be taken from us for the sake of the gospel. That may be the cost that God is asking you to. Are, are you ready for it? Just Wednesday night, we were sitting in our group, and, and he, uh, we were talking about the gospel, and, and Denver says, hey, you know, it, it's a good thing, um, we were talking about the gospel, and he said, it, it's okay when we make mistakes, and this is something that he's learned in school, right? It's okay that I made a mistake, I, I've just done the best that I could. And I had, had a moment that I could share the gospel with my son, and I said, you know, actually, actually, Denver, God doesn't ask us to do the best that we can. He actually asks us to put our faith in Jesus, 
that Jesus has done the best work possible in, in Denver. We, we make mistakes all the time, right? And he's like, yeah, Dad. And I said, yeah, we make mistakes all the time. But Jesus lived a life that was perfect. And so Denver, it's not doing the best you can because, yeah, you're, you're always going to fail. But it's putting your faith in the one that covers all our mistakes. And so that's why it's okay to make mistakes. Not because, hey, you did the best you can, but because when you make mistakes, Jesus actually covers those mistakes, right? That, that, we, I need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit, not just in moments of facing death and persecution and, and trouble, but, man, I need it in parenting, too. I need it in, in being a good spouse. That, that, man, I can speak the gospel to my spouse and, and encourage Rachel in the Lord, right? It comes at cost. But I want to share also that it, that it comes with blessings. It comes with seeing God. It, it comes with Him being in us and, and, and through us and, and seeing His Holy Spirit at work in us. And so uh, I want to share with you one uh, first blessing is that we are blessed because we're sent of Christ. We should be blessed because we're sent of Christ. That as, as daughters and, and sons of Father God, He looks at us and He says, Yeah, I, I'm ready. I'm willing to use you. I, you can speak for me. I, I've given you authority. Man, that's a blessing. We are sent by Christ. In verse 16, it, it says this, Behold, I am sending you. Christ Himself is, is sending you to go. It's deeply satisfying to know that I'm not on my own, I'm doing these things in my own authority or just because I think it's a good thing. No, I'm doing it because I've been sent by Christ. You have been sent by Christ. Secondly, we, we know that we have a blessing that we have been given the words by the Holy Spirit. It's a blessing that I don't have to have 10-point sermon all lined up, or, or a three-point sermon, or, or I don't have to have all the different evangelistic um, tools all memorized, right? Uh, we don't have to be perfectly equipped. We have the perfect equipment that is yes. the, the Holy Spirit. He yes. eats with us, right? In verse 19 and 20, that's the one that I just kept on going back to this morning, when we're dragged before governors and, and, and all and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and to the Gentiles, when to deliver you over, don't be anxious. Can I just speak that to us as a group? Can I just see that a lot? And, 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 just be honest, as your pastor, I see that a lot of us. We're kind of anxious. Or I, don't, I don't know what to say. What if they ask a question I don't know about? I, don't be anxious. Put your trust in the Holy Spirit. He says, don't be anxious. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit, your Father, is speaking through you. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is poured out on us. And part of that, part of having that, is that when we speak to our neighbors, when we speak about the gospel, we think it's not going to be our own words, our own intellect, but no, it's going to be the Spirit of God through us. We have a blessing also that we get to experience the Father's care. Father God's care for us. There's the Father that is speaking through us, and in that, oh God, you, care, you gave me the words right when I needed to say it. We have, a, we have the blessing of salvation. In verse 22 it says, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When all the costs have been paid, we will have the great end of salvation. We will get to the end of the road. We will get to the end of it all. And we will be united with the Father. Forever. Salvation. The blessings of knowing the Son of Man is coming in judgment and in mercy. You will not have gone through all the town before the Son of Man comes. This was an encouragement to the disciples. an encouragement to us as we go. It, it's not going to be a a never-ending trial. It's not going to be a never-ending persecution. Uh, this earth, the things of this earth are, are just, um, they're just short. It's just brief. Our, our time here is is is, is short and, and brief in, in comparison to where the eternity that we have with the Son and the Father forever, right? And, and so this promise to his disciples that the Son of Man is coming and it was something to rejoice in. It was something to take courage in. It was something to, yes, though temporarily my neighbors may hate me, though temporarily I may face death, though temporarily I may be persecuted, Jesus, you're coming. You're coming to fully restore. You're coming to fully rescue. 
Take heart. Take heart in that. Thank you, Lord. The blessing in belonging to Jesus' household. In verse 25, it says this, If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those in his household? So what he was uh, talking about there is that there's a uh, deliverance that happens. And he says, if they, if they are upset about the enemy, then how much more, and the work of the enemy, how much more would they be upset about those of us that belong to the household of God? It's a blessing that we have received salvation. We belong to the Father. And as we go with this, it, we don't go as orphans. We don't go in our own strength. No, we go as part of the family of God. It's a blessing. I don't know what you guys, it's a blessing that we have this Capital City Church say, we are family. We, we go together. We, we are family. We're blood because of the blood of Jesus, right? We belong to the household of God. It's also a blessing in verse 26. To know that the truth will triumph. It says this, 26. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. The truth will triumph. Right? In other, other passages, it reveals that um, they would try to they would, uh, they would try to call you out for your good deeds, but have nothing to say. They will glorify their Father in heaven, right? And when we live this way, with this kind of radical go after God, anything for the gospel, with knowing that we have the Holy Spirit with us, uh, we will experience that, and we will know that the truth will always triumph. The truth will always go forth. The truth will always come out. Nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will but not be known. Count on it. Count on it. The last one here that I want to emphasize is that there is a blessing of being valued by God. Verse 31, it says this, Fear not, therefore, you are more valued than many sparrows. Fear not, for you are more valuable than many sparrows. God does not despise us in our going. He values us. He values our going. He values our efforts. He values our, our, our effort to say, yes, God. He values our effort to, to make that choice to say, hey, do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much he, he, he values us way more? If he says, it says fully that, uh, you know, if he cares for the sparrows, how much more does he care for us? God's call to make disciples, his call to be a part of his plan of reconciling the world to himself, it, it's big. It, it's enormous, right, to think the God of the universe is Andrew. He, he says, Kurt, he says, Joey, he says, look, he says, he says, all is by name. He says, go, go and make disciples. It look, it's humongous. It comes at a, a huge cost, maybe. But it comes with enormous blessing to know that he is with us every step of the way. He doesn't leave us. He values us going. He, he doesn't leave us on our own to, to try to intellectually think out what we're going to say. No, the Holy Spirit is there with us to speak even in those moments where we're called before authorities. He's with us. And so as we've been starting this new year emphasizing, Holy Spirit, be all poured on us. Holy Spirit, I need your effect. Again, I can't help but say, man, this Sunday we need to end our, our gathering together just saying, yes, God, I, I need you. I want to be a part of this. Anybody else with me in the morning? Mm -hmm. I, I want to be a part of this. I, I want to be a part of reconciling the world. I want to be a part of making this. I want to be a part of the Holy Spirit, I need you. God, I, I need you. Give me the boldness I need. Give me the empowerment I need. Give me the overflow of your spirit so it's not me speaking, but it's you speaking. God, give me the creative ideas that, that you have for how do I talk to this person? How do I reach? And God, do it. I, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. 
So this morning, I just want to invite you to stand with me because I think I'm in a room with people that also say, yeah, God, God I, I want to make that an impact. I want to make this kingdom thing. I, I want to make it about you. I want to answer this call to go. And, and God, it's going to cost me something. I recognize that this morning. But God, the, the blessings of being united with you, the blessings of, of being with you, the, the salvation that, that is promised me when I endure, it's worth it. And God, I need you for this. Equip me, empower me. That's you this morning. You say, yeah, Andrew, I just need that empowerment. I need, God, I just need you. I, I need what you have, all that you have for me. That's you this morning. I see, I see those hands. I see it. Hallelujah. God sees it this morning, and, and God loves it. Hallelujah. Right? He loves it because God says he, he resists the proud, but God, he gives, he gives grace to the humble. And so he sees those hands. He's like, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm honored by that. I, I'm honored by those decisions. I'm honored by that. That she would say, yes, I'm joining in on this mission to reconcile the world. Because, right, that's what the that's what, that's the context of this outpouring is. When we talked about the outpouring the last two weeks. The context is, is there's a world that is desperate in need of, of Jesus. And so we receive, let me read that again. We have received without cost. So give without cost. When we get this outpouring, when we get this Holy Spirit, we get these blessings from the Lord, we get it, and we got it without cost. And so he says, give it without cost. This morning, I want to pray over you. I want to invite you to take five minutes before we leave. And whether it's at your seat or here at the altar, let's spend some time saying, yes, God, I need you. I want to be a part of this. I consider the cost. And yes, God, you're worth, you're worthy of it. Let me pray over you. God, I thank 